Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Because of my interest and request, several months ago I was loaned a copy of a memoir written by the father of a Bethel member. And as it goes for many of us, my intention to read it promptly and then return it to her did not transpire. It sat on my desk for several months, but as I was preparing for a vacation this past week, I decided to put it in my suitcase with the hope that some time away would open up room to read this anticipated memoir. Well, the time did open up, and I read it, and am I ever glad I did? Vern wrote so beautifully about his life growing up on the plains of North Dakota, from very humble beginnings to a life filled with a fulfilling career, family life, and opportunities to see the world. Among several themes in his memoir, which also included the importance of his Christian faith, was the saying that motivated him as he explored new adventures. It is this, life is defined by the choices you make and the chances you take. Life is defined by the choices you make and the chances you take. That's provided me with some food for thought over this past week. Considering my own life's story, what the choices that I have made have brought about, whether those were successes or failures, the chances that I have taken in life and wondered whether they were worth the risk or given thanks that I had taken the risk. Certainly when you're more advanced in years, these decisions, these choices, these chances seem to be more clearly resolved or defined. But in the midst of living one's life, choices and chances leave room for the possibility of growth. Well, it is the theme of growth that permeates through all of our readings this morning. Whether it is the planting of a seed, mustard or otherwise, it is clearly that thread through all of the scripture passages today. From our call to worship with its proclamation that the righteous shall flourish like palm trees or grow tall like the cedars of Lebanon. Since palm trees are not as prevalent in our part of Minnesota, maybe we could substitute that the righteous shall flourish like the mighty oak tree. But the cedar tree makes another appearance in the Ezekiel reading about the mighty stature of the cedar. In fact, it is called a noble tree. It not only flourishes with vegetation, but with the abundance of fruit and with places that give shelter to the birds of the air. Then there is the reading from 1 Corinthians that I just highlighted with our children this morning, that in Christ all the old has passed away, and now in Christ a new thing is blooming and growing. We are a new creation in Christ. All of this imagery finds its culmination in Jesus telling a parable of miraculous growth and new life through seeds being planted. Listen again to Jesus' words. The kingdom of heaven is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, and he does not know how. Well, this calls to mind for me a project that my husband and I took on this past May. It was, as you remember, a late spring, and so we had planned uh, in advance to put in a raised garden in our backyard. My husband was actually more excited about this project than I was. In fact, I was very, very reluctant to take it on, hesitant, maybe even the word would be skeptical. You see, I haven't had the most green of thumbs in my life experience. In fact, I would call myself a black thumb gardener. It seems that anything I planted has, by the grace of God, either grown or perhaps it has died. I have never actually had my own garden to tend, but I've always enjoyed others' produce. 
Well, my husband was very excited about this, and the project involved a lot of work. It wasn't a huge raised garden, but it was a project with two yards of dirt that we had to haul in by ourselves and set it out before we could even plant one seed. Well, remember, I was a little bit reluctant and skeptical, and would you believe that my husband's words of advice to me were this, and Jeanette, have a little faith. <laughs> Well, lo and behold, here it is about a month later, and we've got growth. I can't believe it. I go to the backyard, and sure enough, there are radishes growing, carrots growing. There are stalks for corn and for tomatoes, and, and there's just even rows upon rows of things I don't even remember planting. But in fact, there is growth. I look at that, and I wonder, just like in the parable story, how did this even happen? It's an amazing sight to see. Now, I will admit there is one row that did not grow, and I distinctly remember when it was my turn to plant it, I said, now, remind me, how deep were these seeds supposed to be planted? And my husband told me, and I don't think that was the right depth, and I said, eh, whatever. <laughs> and sure enough, that's the one row that's not growing. <laughs> Indeed, we are reminded, life is about the choices you make and the chances you take. On some level, the parable Jesus tells functions as a reminder that life and faith and growth all have an element of the unexpected that can be both comforting and unsettling. We can make a choice to plant a seed but we are taking our chances as to whether or not it will grow, let alone produce fruit. And in the end, it really isn't all up to us at all. God will bring about what God wants. We can't make it happen, nor can we prevent it. God's reign of redemption and surprising love and grace can't be controlled, moderated, or domesticated. It's why the mustard seed parable is an important addition to Jesus' words today in his teaching. Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of the seeds of the earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the airs can make nest in its shade. If a mustard seed can shatter all expectations with its growth from something small into something great, maybe we ought to push ourselves to have a little faith, to trust a little more, to worry a little less. Have a little more faith when things look impossible or realize that life is filled with changes and chances that some seem out of control and others that do not. But it is God's promises that will never fail us. They are always given to us anew. God's kingdom will break into realities that are difficult and offer hope. God's kingdom will help new life to spring forth again. There is an old adage that says, Work like it's all up to you, but pray like it's all up to God. Life will bring with it choices and chances. It always does, it always will. But as Paul writes, we walk by faith, not by sight. We keep at it and we trust. In fact, Paul says, yes, we have confidence walking by faith and not by sight, because when you walk by faith, you close your eyes, you pray, and you let the one who is the light lead the way. Amen.